Y'all, it's your boy Farrell 4220. Y'all, I'm chilling over here in the North City, Tennessee. That's uh, I 40, exit number 380, no, 364. Right, I'm over here at the Loves, chilling out. I got a few more minutes before my clock comes back. And I shall be ready to ride. I got about, I don't know, 32 minutes. So, uh, you know, I just wanted to, I haven't made any videos here lately. So I just wanted to kind of put y'all up on game on what's been going on with me and what's been going on in the truck. Uh, you know, uh, Mercer's a great company and all, but I think I just came over here too fast, you know. Um, my truck's not paid off yet, so it's kind of hard for me to find good paying loads all the time when I got truck and trailer payment, insurance, and all the other expenses coming out. It's just really hard to do. And then they're building, excuse me, they're building their uh, clientele base up, so a lot of their freight, you know, like I mentioned before, is all broken. So therefore, you know, it's kind of hard when you're trying to make ends meet with broker freight. Um, I'm not saying that it can't be done. All I'm saying is that it's very, very hard for me right now. Last year was a little bit different. Freight rates were different. You know, everything was uh, was going a lot smoother. This year, things just took a nosedive. And then, uh, I mean, there's a lot of people that turn in their permit books and plates to Mercer that I've noticed. And, uh, I mean, there's plenty of options out there. There's other fish in the sea, but, you know, my number one thing, like I used to say all the time, is, you know, you got to watch who you lease on to. And it goes for me, too, you know. You lease on to a company that you think has freight, and then down the line, you know, a year or two later, you find out they really don't have the freight. Now you're trying to make ends meet, you know, and that's the hard problem. The other day I took a load of hay from Basin, Wyoming, all the way down to uh, uh, Cartersville, Georgia, I think is where it was. No, where was it at? Somewhere in Georgia. But I had to take it down there. It was down there by uh, Columbus, Georgia. And I'm gonna tell you something. That was, a, that was a hell of a road right there. And that was a hell of a trip. Uh, not only did I have to help them load it and get all scratched up, scratched up now I got scratch marks all over my legs all over my arms you know I got I got marks all over me and stuff on both arms both legs had some on my face you know uh, from from messing with the hay y'all seen the pictures on Facebook I put I had my black mask over you know my little rag and uh, once I got there you know finally got the load got it loaded then they had to take off with the load then by the time I got down to Georgia, you know, same scenario again. You know, this time I had to unload with the help of some other people. We had more people to unload this time. And I pretty much let them do a lot of the work since it was theirs. And, uh, but, you know, I did help some. And, uh, you know, it was a family event, family affair. They were very, very nice people. So I'm not going to talk bad about them. Neither shipper nor receiver were bad people. Both of them were very, very good people, you know, and um, I would just like to say that in, in any other time of my life, I would have never took that low. So it was a good thing that I got to meet them. They were all nice and everything. I got scratched up and, and, and bit up by mosquitoes again, dealing with them out there in Georgia because I'm in Georgia. And then not only that, but rips my mud flap off broke my mud flap uh, holder on the back of the truck, so the thing is just flopping around. I really don't have the money to get it fixed right now. I'll get it fixed eventually unless DOT pulls me over. But um, other than that, you know, like I'm saying, you know, a lot of maintenance, a lot of maintenance can, can end you, you know what I'm saying? You know, just the small, simple things can end you. You know, uh, here lately, I've been paying for tires. You know, I buy two tires here, buy two tires there, buy two tires here, buy two tires there, buy two tires here, you know, and that just kind of like eats you up right there. 
what I should have did was I should have just waited. I should have just waited until it was mandatory that I had to get them. But that would have caused another problem. So. We had the blitz going on earlier this month where DOT was out checking trucks, trailers for tires. That was one of the main reasons why I wanted to make sure my tires were good so I didn't have to deal with that. But I actually got it, got away with it because I went up by 90 and I didn't have to deal with the uh, DOT at all. So, um, Right now, you know, my only other issue is I got two more drive tires to do, which is on the passenger second axle. Those are the last two drive tires. Then I have, start having to focus on trailer tires. Okay, and then my AC went out in the back, so it's been pretty hot back there. And it's kind of hard when you gotta idle the truck just to keep it cool. And then, you know, I've been putting this Freon stuff in there, but it ain't really been keeping it cold. So, you know, I gotta really check on things. I need to sit down and get my truck to the shop and get it fixed. And then the number one mistake that I've had that I still haven't had a chance to fix yet is my bumper poles. Uh, uh, the po like, for the Pro Star, when you raise the hood up, they got the bumper on the bottom. Well, that raises up also. That raises out also. Well, on the driver's side, when I nosed into a parking spot, the uh, poles or whatever it was got bent, broken, or whatever. So for the longest time, I had tape wrapped around them just to keep them at bay. But then they started breaking at the bolts. So I went ahead and just unbolted them and took them off, and then I used bungee cords. Bungee cords work pretty good, the, the, um, the black rubber cords. They work pretty good, but you know I need to get I need to get the poles fixed, and it's gonna cost me about three hundred dollars to get the poles fixed, unless I go to a junkyard or something and find an old Pro Star and take the poles off of that, or I buy a new bumper altogether. So the, here's the dilemma. Okay, Stamp Mercer, try to make it work. Keep moving around, trying to keep, you know, getting different types of freight going. Uh, leave Mercer, go to another company, turn the truck in all together, turn the trailer in all together. Go back to being the company driver. I got a couple options on those. Paying about 42, 43 cents a mile options. Get back the trailer, keep the truck, go back to the previous company I was at before. So those are my issues, those are my options. You know, there's not like, really there's not like nothing that Mercer did to me or nothing like that. I think right now, the point of the matter was that I just came over here too soon. I should have came over here after my truck was paid for, after I had bought all my equipment, flatbed equipment, and I should have came over here as a flatbed. So I think that was what my issue was. I think I just wanted to try something different and you know, from trying something different, I gave it a year and a half almost basically, you know, a year and four months, five months, you know. But ultimately, you know, the decision doesn't lay on me, per se. The decision lays on my family. You know, what my family wants me to do because I'm out here working for my family and if things don't work out right I need to make adjustments for my family I mean it's no hard feelings I, I, I ain't got no love loss for anybody for any company for anybody that I work for or anything like that what I, what I don't understand is and this is a this is an honest God truth right here we all out here to do a job. We're all out here to make money to take care of our family. So if you're a company and you know that that's what we're out here to do, because that's what you're out here to do, you're out here to make money for your company so that you can make money for your family, why would you think truck drivers are any different? Why would you think we got 
millions of dollars that we don't care if we don't get a decent paycheck or not. My thing is, you know what I'm saying, think about us when you're out there getting your paycheck and how often you get to go home to see your family and how we're out here dealing with the stuff that we got to deal with. You know, if, if it's not something that you would do yourself, then I would think that you would have a little bit of compassion and sympathy for us truck drivers who are out here. And maybe those of you who are picking loads for us or that are looking for loads for us that, you know, we ask you to help us, then you would take that in consideration. You know, I know that you're trying to move your freight for your favorite buddies and stuff, but think about that driver that you're supposed to be pulling freight for. If he asks you for a certain dollar per mile, get it. If he asks you for a certain revenue per week, get it, you know? Don't come up with no excuses on why there's nothing there, you know? And then and then mostly, don't tell him the loads aren't there, you know what I'm saying? If he goes and looks on the board, sees a load, and then you call back and say that load's no good or left Friday or whatever, why is it on the board? Get it off the board. You know, that's the key thing. Keep your blow boards up to date and current. It should be within 15 to 20 minutes up to date. Which means if I hit refresh, the old loads that are on, on that are not there should not be on the board no more. They shouldn't still be sitting on the board. You know, and that's I think where a lot of companies succeed where others fail. Is because they keep their information and their lines of communication is open. You know, so um, that's all I really got to say about that. But, uh, you know, if you got any opinions or you want to voice yourself, you know, um, I'm going to put this on YouTube. So you guys are free and more than welcome to reply back with a video, make some comments, you know, hit me up on email or text me or whatever. I ain't really tripping. You know, my thing is, you know, we're all out here to do a job. We're all out here to take care of our families. Whether you got a wife or you got eight kids, a wife and eight kids, it doesn't matter. We're all out here to do a job. And that job is to make money for our family. And if you want us to make money for the family or make money for the company, then we got to make money for our families in the process. You know, um, I'd hate to be the bearer of bad news when it comes down to it, but companies are going to get their money regardless of what we do. There's nothing that we can change in a company said that will make us get more money than that company. No. The only thing we can do is try our best to keep up with it on how much money we're supposed to get. And uh, if if we can keep up with that and keep our, keep our expenses low, our overhead low, then we'll profit a lot of money. But then again, they'll always find some reason to take what we got because they don't want us to have it. Anyhow, this is your boy Pharaoh. If you see things differently than me, then that's fine. That's what life is all about. Different perspectives. So yo, I'm out of here. Y'all have a good day. Peace.